time to save Superman? Hey everyone, welcome to Princess the Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my adventure for Superman Season 2, Episode 8. And yeah, last episode we found out why and how Jimmy and Lois were in space in a spaceship with Monsieur Marlot and the brain. And now I guess we're going to follow that up with them, you know, reconvening Kara here and going to save Clark. So it's going to be interesting to see how this is done, what happens, yada yada yada. Um, I don't know what that, what to expect at all. I haven't seen any spoilers for this. I'm just really interested to see what they end up doing with this. Because at this point, Kara's already discovered that she caused these multi multi-planetary gen genocides. And she's, you know, in a very <laughs> negative state because of it. But we know she likes Jimmy, so she'll probably, uh, she'll probably listen to him here, and and she'll probably accept their help. Maybe it, she might be a little cautious at first because of Lois, the brain of Monsieur Marat, but she'll eventually accept their help. I feel. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this rescue mission. Um, now the question is how well they're going to be able to do against someone like Primus Brainwave and all of the utilities and tools that he has on his side. Because we've already seen the kinds of shit he can pull and how even Clark was not really a match for uh, what he can do at this point. So it's going to be difficult. But with Kara added in, with the others joining forces, um, maybe something can be done here. Um, plus, if they are able to rescue Clark before even getting caught, then they'll have the power of two Kryptonians on their side, and that would help a lot. I guess we'll just have to see. We'll just have to find out. But after this, there's only two more episodes left in this season, so we're definitely gearing up for a big fight. I, unless they're setting more up for Brainiac in the future... I don't think we're going to really get, like, Task Force X and Luther as, like, the main villains of, of the season finale here. I think it's more going to be Brainiac. And then, I, he, even if he's not, like, fully taken out and he comes back in the future, we'll then move on to uh, Task Force X and Luther in the next season. I think they're more setting up for that one. But I could be wrong. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um... But I just feel like leaving Brainiac open-ended right now wouldn't kind of make sense, because I don't feel like he would just let things go, even if they escaped and got back to Earth. I feel like that would lead to him invading them. So, I guess we'll see. Um, but, we're not going to waste much of any more time. Uh, we're going to get right into this. There's only one thing I have to do beforehand, and that is to remind you all that we have a lot of great content to check out channel. Um, between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions, and on Monday specifically, we also have YouTube reactions, or at least YouTube adjacent. Shorts, specials, miniseries that just don't have a lot of episodes, or, well, surprise, surprise, YouTube shorts. Pretty much anything that doesn't quite fit into a normal series or movie reaction, it goes in this slot. And speaking of movie reactions, we have those normally every Saturday and Sunday. We record them during the week, upload them on the weekend uh, just so that every day has some sort of reaction content going on in it. And I say normally because you may have noticed this past week we've been doing pretty much uh, just Zatoichi movies Monday through Friday and that's our movies for the week. Uh, because we've had this special Zatoichi week there's not going to be any movies this weekend but we go back to the normal Saturday and Sunday schedule next week. Uh, we also have a couple Let's Plays going on on the channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day. So you'll see one yesterday on Thursday, there will be one tomorrow on Saturday, then Monday, then Wednesday, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Every other day. 
we have Poppy Playtime on Saturday. So, and we're only doing Chapter 1 because that's all that's released on the PS5 so far. But I'm bad enough at puzzles, admittedly, to where there's enough footage recorded that I was able to split it into a few different parts. So it works out for that. And uh, just as a note, it is a donation reward Let's Play called Venom. And if you want to know how to donate for this future PS5 Let's Play, go to the channel, go to the channel search, and all in one search type in June Double Reward Month PS5. It should lead you to the correct video that will let you know everything you need to in regards to how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play. So, all of that being said, though, let us get on with the reaction and see what this episode of My Adventures with Superman has in store for us. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the links to the reaction because, yes, we do redirect our reactions to this particular channel. I understand it may not be the best option. You don't want to have to do all this extra work just to get to the reaction. But you know how YouTube's copyright system can be. It's, it's really shitty. It's unfair. So to keep things safe so we can avoid any possible channel strikes or even worse, a channel termination, both of which I've dealt with in the past and don't want to do again, we push all the reactions to another site. It just makes sure the channel remains safe and whatnot. Um, and... On the plus side, this does allow me to give you the full unedited reactions completely free. That's right. Every single one of you gets to see every single reaction we post, whether it be a movie, a series, YouTube content, whatever else. You get to see the full reaction completely free. No paywalls. You don't have to subscribe to a Patreon. And you don't even have to sync up your own copies. I think that's pretty sweet because not every reaction channel is able to do that for two very valid reasons, mind you. But uh, whether it's due to monetization or copyright or other uh, reasons, not every uh, reaction channel can do that. And so I do pride myself, admittedly, on being able to give that to you. And I hope you enjoy it. And after you watch the reaction, you can come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode but also just my general thoughts on things, on the season as a whole, and maybe even some stuff related to the channel. You never know. It's always worth checking out just in case. All of that being said, though, thank you so, so much, as always, for tuning in. And for now, I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we will begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Yeah, I, I would say that this season is very much better than the first one. And without question, I would definitely say this is my favorite Superman story. Not only is it just super well written and, you know, voice acted and uh, animated and whatnot, but it's just so well handled because... Part of the biggest issue I feel with Superman is a lot of times in a lot of stories, Superman is just overpowered. He's just the superhero who is the like peak of what it means to be a superhero. Um, and he ends up coming across most of the time because of that as being very flawed in a lot of ways. And... My sister agrees with me on this, I know, that that can oftentimes lead to, like, little tension, very little stakes, and just not be really that entertaining. Because it's like, when you, when you watch a superhero story, you want to see flaws in that character. You want to see them struggle. You want to see them overcome the odds. It's part of the appeal of superhero movies. To see them take on enemies who maybe are not necessarily stronger, but could also be smarter than them, could also just outwit and outmaneuver uh, them, to just overcome whatever odds are placed on them. Whether it be from a villain, the government, um, just the people in general, uh, depending on the story and the hero, like all kinds of and that's what makes a lot of them so interesting and unique and really well done. 
And with this version of the story, you have a Clark, you have a Kal-El, you have a Superman who is not perfect. He is not this all-powerful, insanely uh, OP hero. He's anything but. Like, he's still learning his powers. He doesn't even have all of the standard Superman powers at his disposal yet. He's still learning them, still mastering them. He very much is flawed and make mista- makes mistakes constantly. He is very much flawed to his own mind, as we very much see in this episode. And on top of that, he's just not necessarily the strongest. He's able to be beaten physically and mentally. He's able to be taken out in a lot of different ways, and it doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel forced when it happens. In a lot of the Superman stories, whenever he's defeated, a lot of times it can feel forced because it's like, oh, you have this all-powerful OP hero. How the hell do you actually defeat him while making it feel natural? A lot of the times it's hard to do that. But that's why I like the stories where he does feel like a person, not just this like otherworldly being even though technically he is. (laughs) I like it when he feels like a person, and this version of him is so well-written, it makes him feel flawed. It makes him feel real. And, of course, Jack Quaid's performance as him is phenomenal. I've praised the hell out of that um, since season one. Um, But to be fair, Jack Quaid's just a great actor. He's he's great in this, he's great in The Boys, he's great in... uh, Scream. It's like, I just want to see and hear his voice in many more things. He just needs to continue to get this high level of attention. <laughs> he, he's an amazing actor. So I love he- seeing him and hearing him in this role. I think he's doing a phenomenal job. And of course, everyone else is too. All the actors in this really nail it. And I'm very happy, very pleased with what they're doing in regards to this. Um, This episode in particular very much seems to be a sort of play on the death of Superman. So if you don't know the death of Superman story, it's one of the most famous Superman stories there is. It's been made, it's been, versions of it have been made in all kinds of different media. Um, But basically the gist of it is that Doomsday killed Superman. And he event it, it's eventually found out he didn't technically die. He kind of went into this near-death trance state that kind of re- revived him. And so, like, a, a while into the future, he does come back and has to, you know, make a comeback to save the day or whatnot. Um, here, we don't have Doomsday, though. Here we have Brainiac, who is one of Superman's biggest enemies as well but more intellect than brute strength. Uh, Doomsday is usually just a big, brooding, Hulk-like figure, (laughs) so a very different kind of situation. And here, Clark's death, once again, is kind of greatly exaggerated. He doesn't really die here. His body has been fully taken over by Brainiac's mind leaving Clark's mind in sort of this uh, dream-like trance. He's stuck in this uh, dream where he's still on Krypton. His parents are alive. His cousin, his Taro, is there as well as... I assume the other guy there was supposed to be Taro's father? I assume? Um, And so he has, like, this perfect, happy Kryptonian life as if, you know, Krypton didn't blow up and his family was going to (laughs) die. Um, and he's stuck in that trance because of Brainiac. But he is just stuck in a trance. Which means if Brainiac's mind can be forced out, or at the very least, Clark's mind can be freed in order to push back and force Brainiac out of him somehow, um, which we know Lois is going to try and help with that, that would be the way to try and, uh, save the day here or fix it because otherwise there's not really anything they can do physically 
Carla's not Sonya on her own. She just isn't. Jimmy and Lois absolutely are not Sonya. I mean, if Carla's not, they're not going to be. <laughs> and Mansoor and Mala and the brain, like, they're super smart. They're scientists, but there's not too much they can do in this situation to help. So, really, it does come down to Lois basically waking Clark up. And that's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need Clark himself to fight back. Now, the thing is, Brainiac is a genius. That's kind of his thing. He is a super genius. Even if Clark fights back and is able to purge the Brainiac that is inside of his body, without, one, without question, Brainiac has a backup. His mind is absolutely backed up somewhere. Um, even if his uh, old body is destroyed and everything, even if he's purged from Clark's head, he will be back. This wouldn't stop him altogether. But this episode, with the way it ends and everything, definitely confirms my thoughts. Brainiac is the main final villain of this season. Um, Lex Luthor, Task Force X, they're like a recurring enemy, but they're not the main villains in this season. They're, they're built, being built up to continue to be the main villains down the road. And that's going to be a big thing when we get to that. But right now, we're focused on Brainiac. But like I said, I don't think we're going to be fully defeating him here because he's going to have a backup. So Brainiac will be able to return in the future. This will just be a temporary thing. I could very much see them stopping Brainiac here, but, like, the end credit scene of uh, the final episode will be, like, showing that he's still alive and existing. Something like that, I, I feel like, could very much be the goal. Um, but we have two more episodes to go. Next episode's probably gonna involve, you know, saving Clark, which I thought was gonna happen this episode, but no, it extended itself further in order to have this takeover plot line. Um, so next episode is probably going to be saving him then and maybe leading into the final episode, which is going to probably be like a big final battle of some sort. Um, now, Kara still has not donned the Supergirl persona and outfit yet, so that's probably going to come in the final episode because we know it's coming. The promotional image for this season has her in the Supergirl outfit. And, and, you know, you have to build up to her being Supergirl. You have to have that by the end of the season. There, there's too much obvious setup for this. Um, so I'm thinking, like, after they defeat Brainiac, they're going to come back to Earth and, like, probably, uh, maybe even one of the final shots of the season is going to be her wearing the costume. And finally taking the, the name Supergirl. That's probably going to be one of the final shots we see in the season. That's kind of what I'm feeling. I, I feel like that's the best way to do it at this point. Um, I, I think that would be right. I, I, I think that makes the most sense. But I guess we'll have to see. Because like I said, we got two more episodes. I don't think they're releasing together. I think the first two released together. But let, let me check something. My Adventures with Superman. Because I, I almost feel like it would be a good idea to watch them together. But I'm, I'm kind of wondering if I should like wait a week on that. Also, there is a third season already confirmed and all, so we don't have to worry about that. That'll probably come next year. Um, okay, I'm going to see here. Okay, here's season two. No, they're not. Uh, episode 9 is coming on the 14th, which is, like, tomorrow. And uh, episode 10 does come on the 21st. So they're not actually being released together. 
So I'm wondering if I should wait a week or if I should just, you know, go as I've been going. I should probably just keep doing the one episode at a time. Waiting a week, it's like that's that's going to be hell for me. <laughs> wait, waiting even longer. I, I think I'll just do them separately. Um, but yeah, so I'm very excited to see how this closes out. Um, this has been so damn good. Like I said, this season has unquestionably to me been like drastically better than the first. And I love the first season. But this season has just like taken it up like 10 notches. It's so much better in every way. Kara is an amazing character. She's such a welcome addition. This version of Kara is again, probably my favorite version of Kara. I I just like I I like how she's like this flawed uh antagonist character at, st at the start who then realizes they it's like oh no i've just been brainwashed and you know manipulated and gaslit by brainiac into doing all this horrible evil shit i i, I said it before i'm saying it again it's basically adora from sheer on the francis's of power and like i've said before i believe i mean that and i say that with all the faith because i love she and I love how they worked Adora's story in this season. So I love that they're doing it again here. Uh, and, and I don't know if it's directly inspired by that. Um, honestly, it could go either way if it is or not. But it's unquestionably good. Unquestionably good. It's not done exactly the same. It's not executed exactly the same. But still, um, I just, I, I'm just really all for this. I'm really excited, and I can't wait to see uh, what happens next. So, yeah, like I said, we'll do the, I guess, the last two episodes just as they air. So next week we'll do uh, the, the next episode, episode 9, and then we'll do episode 10 the week after. Um but in the meantime, tell me in the comments below what did you think of this episode of My Adventures with Superman. And, uh, yeah. Before we close this out, I do really quickly want to remind you uh, what is coming. Uh, or, um, I want to remind you that we have a lot of great content on the channel. I don't know why I said that, what I said there. Um, between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions. And on Monday, we have YouTube, or at least YouTube-adjacent reactions. Pretty much anything that doesn't quite fit into a normal series or movie reaction, it goes in that slot. On uh, the weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, normally we have movie reactions. I pre-record them during the week, upload them on the weekend, just so that every day has some sort of reaction content going on for you. And mind you, I say normally because you noticed this past week we have had Zakuichi movies Monday through Friday. And that is because we had a special week, Zakuichi week. So there's no movies this Saturday and Sunday. But next week, we go back to the normal schedule. We also are going to do a couple Let's Plays on the channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day. There was one yesterday on Thursday. There will be one tomorrow on Saturday. And then again on Monday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. Every other day. Uh, we're also planning to do Poppy Playtime on Saturday. This is a donation reward Let's Play for Venom. And yeah. If you want to know how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play, go to the channel, go to the channel search, and all in one search, type in June Double Reward Month PS5. It should take you to the correct video that will let you know everything you need to regarding how to donate for a future PS5 Let's Play. So, that all being said, thank you as always so much for tuning in. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next.